Last week, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk set a deadline for launchpad upgrades. Major launchpad upgrades should be complete in about a month, Musk shared via Twitter. In just a month. This means that the SpaceX team is getting ready to ramp up their progress. These days, we have observed the significant progress of the ongoing groundwork. Numerous holes have been drilled into the ground, each containing a rebar cage that is subsequently filled with concrete. These holes are positioned at the center of the table. The ground drill is visible in operation, positioned on cripping over the softer ground. After drilling, the holes rapidly fill with water owing to the shallow water table in Boca Chica. But besides that, more sheet pilings have been installed around the OLM perimeter. These will form a retaining wall that can be excavated to work on the pipe for the water and install the steel water-cooled plates like this. Kudos to Chrome Kiwi for this amazing concept art. In any case, at this point, the drill till shows no signs of stopping. So there will be a lot of rebar work down here before concrete is laid. And SpaceX has enough for this. This thickness of rebar is for major stability. We're talking cross beam strength. It's also possible that they will connect the legs of the OLM table together with the center stability concrete pylons so the panels sit sturdily and won't sink into wet soil. Based on our observations on the current progress, SpaceX can completely meet its deadline. And hopefully this goes well with a complete set of 33 Raptors firing. SpaceX is indeed continuously striving for improvement and innovation, often requiring testing, adjustments, or even the complete replacement of existing structures. One such example is the recent removal of the low bay. Initially constructed to provide wind protection during the welding operations, the low bay proved to be ineffective. Consequently, operations were relocated to the mid bay, offering superior protection. Over time, the low bay transformed into a storage and workspace for nose cones. However, with the introduction of taller buildings, the purpose of the low bay became obsolete. These new structures now provide ample space for nose cone activities, rendering the low bay redundant. SpaceX now plans to replace the low bay with a facility called Star Factory, which will undoubtedly meet the evolving needs and requirements of their operations. So, farewell, my low bay. Next up, can you believe that the next starship can happen before the Boeing Starliner sends astronauts to the ISS? You want to make a bet? Anyway, despite emerging issues and concerns raised by a safety panel recently, NASA and Boeing said on May 26th they are still working towards a July launch of the CST-100 Starliner on a crewed test flight. In a statement issued just before the close of business ahead of a holiday weekend, the two organizations said they completed a checkpoint review on May 25th of operations for the crew flight test or CFT mission, currently scheduled for no early Earlier than July 21st. Two NASA astronauts, Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams, will fly on CFT to the International Space Station on the short test flight, the first crew flight of the spacecraft. NASA and Boeing said they have now completed 95% of the certification work needed for CFT. They have also addressed all the anomalies from the orbital flight test or the OFT-2 mission, an uncrewed test flight of Starliner to the ISS about a year ago. We are taking a methodical approach to the first crewed flight of Starliner, incorporating all of the lessons learned from the various in-depth testing campaigns. Steve Stitch, NASA Commercial Crew Program Manager, said, in a statement. In addition to the closeout of ongoing work, the team remains vigilant on tracking new technical issues as we complete certification for crewed flight. The statement mentioned emerging issues that need a path to closure before NASA and Boeing decide to fuel the spacecraft in June for a July launch. Boeing officials said earlier this year they decided to fuel the spacecraft only within 60 days of launch as a measure to mitigate any fuel leaks that could could corrode valves, which is an issue that delayed an August of 2021 launch attempt for the OFT-2 mission. Among the issues is swapping out a valve in the thermal control system in the spacecraft's service module, which was reducing flow in one of two redundant loops that cooled the vehicle's avionics. 
The valve replacement will take about a week, NASA and Boeing said, and should not affect the CFT launch schedule. Engineers are also evaluating whether tape used on wiring could pose a flammability risk. Although that tape is commonly used on other spacecraft, they are evaluating if it is acceptable for crewed flight. The organizations said that the assessment should be done before the decision to fuel the spacecraft. Another system being reviewed is Starliner's parachutes. NASA and Boeing said they are reassessing margins in the parachutes, including the overall efficiency of joints in that system to ensure they achieve the required safety factors for a crewed spacecraft. The statement came a day after a public meeting of NASA's Aerospace Safety Advisory Panel, or ASAP, where the committee's chair, Patricia Sanders, raised concerns about the ability to complete work, such as parachute certification, in time to meet the planned July 21st launch. The NASA Boeing statement did not mention the ASAP meeting. However, it did address one issue Sanders raised about the spacecraft's batteries. The organizations said they had approved the batteries for use on CFT based on additional testing and analysis, with a proposal to upgrade the batteries on future missions. Stitch, in a statement, said the agency and company had made progress since late March when they announced the certification work would push the CFT CFT launch from April to July. If you look back two months ago at the work we had ahead of us, it's almost all complete, he said. The combined team is resilient and resolute in their goal of flying crew on Starliner as soon as it is safe to do so. However, he did not rule out a slip from the current July launch date. If a schedule adjustment needs to be made in the future, then we will certainly do that as we have done before. We will only fly when we are ready. So, who's going to carry out their next launch attempt first? Starship or Starliner? Place your bets in the comments down below. And for our last bit of news, the James Webb Space Telescope just discovered a gargantuan geyser on Saturn's moon, blasting water hundreds of miles into space. This isn't the first time scientists have seen Enceladus spout water, but the new telescope's wider perspective and higher sensitivity showed that the jets of vapor shoot much further out into space than previously realized, many times deeper in fact, than the width of Enceladus itself. Analysis revealed that the jets contained methane, carbon dioxide, and ammonia, organic molecules containing chemical building blocks necessary for the development of life. It's even possible that some of these gases were produced by life itself, burping out methane deep beneath the surface of Enceladus, an international team of researchers posited in research published last year in the Planetary Science Journal. Water is also another piece of evidence in the case for possible life on Enceladus. Enceladus is totally encrusted in a thick layer of water ice, but measurements of the moon's rotation suggest that a vast ocean is hidden beneath the frozen crust. Scientists think the spurts of water sensed by JWST and Cassini come from hydrothermal vents in the ocean floor a hypothesis supported by the presence of silica, a common ingredient in planetary crusts in the vapor plumes. NASA scientists are discussing future return missions to seek out signs of life on Enceladus. The proposed Enceladus Orbilander would orbit the moon for about six months, flying through its watery plumes and collecting samples. Then, the spacecraft would convert into a lander descending on the surface of the icy moon. Orbilander would carry instruments to weigh and analyze molecules as well as a DNA sequencer and a microscope. Can't forget those. Along with that, cameras, radio sounders, and lasers would remotely scan the moon's surface, the Planetary Society reported. Another proposed mission involves sending an autonomous snake robot into the watery depths below Enceladus' surface. The robot, dubbed the Exobiology Extent Life Surveyor, or more aptly, EELS, features cameras and LIDAR on its head to help it navigate the unknown environment of Enceladus's ocean floor. Can't wait to hear their decision about that in the future. But as always, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. This is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.